now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Ray Shasho Show, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Each week, Ray spotlights in-depth interviews with legendary and -and up-and-coming authors and music artists. Ray also features the movers and the shakers of the music and publishing industries and suggests important methods for getting the most out of your public relations and marketing needs. Please welcome music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello, everyone. I'm Ray Shasho, broadcasting from BBS Radio, and welcome to the show, where we spotlight legendary and up-and-coming music artists and authors, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call us today at 941-877-1552, or visit www.publicityworksagency.com. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. Seattle, Washington native Roger Fisher was the hard-driving electric fury that established Hart as a rock and roll powerhouse in the 70s. Originally known as Hocus Pocus, Hart was formed by guitarist Roger Fisher, bassist Steve Fawson, and Roger, bro- Roger's brother Mike Fisher, who became the band's manager. They met Ann Wilson at one of the band's gigs. Soon thereafter, Roger, Mike, Steve, and Ann Wilson moved to Canada. Hart was officially formed in 1973 with their new songstress and songwriter, Ann Wilson. The following year, guitarist, vocalist, songwriter, and sister Nancy Wilson joined the band. With the help of producer Mike Flicker and session guitarist, keyboardist Howard Lease, who became a full-time member of Hart in 1975, the band recorded a demo tape. Hart's debut album, Dreamboat Annie, was subsequently recorded for Mushroom Records in Vancouver, Canada. The seductive album cover featured a bare-shouldered Ann and Nancy leaning up against each other. The singles, Magic Man and Dreamboat Annie, quickly gained notoriety over Canadian airwaves. Dreamboat Annie was released in the U.S. on Valentine's Day, 1976. Magic Man became the band's first top ten hit. Crazy on You reached number 35, and the single Dreamboat Annie reached number 42 in the U.S. on Billboard's Hot 100. The album sold over a million copies and became a mainstay on AOR radio stations worldwide. Hart became instantly identifiable as a rock phenomenon, a band fronted by two beautiful and multi-talented women, but backed by hard rock virtuosos. It was that very combination which gave the band its true identity. Brothers Roger and Mike Fisher became uh, romantically involved with sisters Nancy and Ann Wilson, and Magic Man was written about Mike's torrid love affair with Ann. After the success of Dreamboat Annie, Hart left Mushroom Records due to a publicity stunt that stated the sisters were actually lesbian lovers. The group signed with Portrait Records and later released the album Little Queen in 1977. The album featured Barracuda, a tune that would become recognized as Hart's signature song. Roger Fisher's pivotal hard rock thrusting intro to Barracuda will forever be glorified in rock and roll history. And Wilson penned the tune out of sheer anger over Mushroom's lesbian publicity stunt. Roger Fisher was a co-writer on Barracuda and on many other tracks on Little Queen. Barracuda reached number 11 on Billboard's Hot 100. Another preeminent arrangement on the album was Roger Fisher's co-written masterpiece titled Love Alive. 1978, Hart released Dog and Butterfly on Portrait Records. The album spent 36 weeks on the charts and peaked at number 7 on Billboard's 200 highest-selling albums. Straight On was the first song released from the album, reaching number 15 on the charts. The title track, Dog and Butterfly, reached number 34 on Billboard's Hot 100. Dog and Butterfly spawned several profound arrangements, including Minstrel Win, an incredible rock measure co-written by Roger Fisher. In 1979, Roger's romance with Nancy Wilson ended. Later that year, Roger Fisher was voted out of the band. Mike Fisher also left the band after breaking his relationship with Ann Wilson. Hart lost their rock and roll backbone when Roger Fisher was asked to leave the band. Roger's songwriting and iconic guitar riffs have been used in numerous TV commercials, TV shows, Guitar Hero, and in several movies, including Charlie's Angels and Shrek 3. Other artists have covered his material, including Eminem. His timeless anthem guitar intro to Barracuda is frequently used as the lead in for America's number one rated radio talk show, Rush Limbaugh. 
Tony Robbins refers to Barracuda as part of the turning point in his life. It was also controversially featured by Republican presidential and vice presidential candidates John McCain and Sarah Palin in the 2008 election. The original lineup of Hart was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2013. Roger Fisher's latest release is album one, entitled It's All Told, of a four-album package entitled One Vision with brother Mike, a.k.a. Magic Man. Please welcome legendary Hart guitarist and songwriter Roger Fisher to the Ray Shasho Show. Hello, Roger. Hey, Ray Shasho Show. That's a good one. <laughs> Did that cover just about everything? <laughs> or almost? <laughs> no, it covered enough. Mike and, I are enough, huh? on a, Mike and I are working on a dual autobiography that will cover a lot more uh, detail in there. you got a lot of stuff going on. <clears throat> yeah, you know, yeah. it's nice at 67 years old to not be in a hurry to, to finish any of it. <laughs> oh, mean, you know, just, 67 is a new, new 50. <laughs> yeah, we plod along and, and, and we uh, we work you know, at least five days a week on right. our art. And it's, it's wonderful to, you know, to have your, your brother to, to be working with. Uh, we, we happen to like each other, and so it works out really well. That's unusual. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, I talked to, you know, uh, uh, Dave Davies of the Kinks, and, you know, I was kidding him about his relationship with Ray. Yeah, that's that's always up and down, you know, and then he grew up in a musical yeah. family. Yeah. So, and, you know, I got an older brother. I know how it is. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a good thing that you guys, you know, are close and work together like that. I think it's wonderful. It's a, it's a real neat team because, uh, you know, I have certain strengths and weaknesses, and he has different strengths. And so we rely on both of our input of our positive uh, best points to have a check, check and balance the system that makes the music much more than it could be without either one of us. Yeah, and it's cool because you were both there from the very, very beginning, you know, even before Hart even you know, it got launched. So you guys... Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. Man, people don't know uh, how big an influence we were in the band. I mean, I think a lot of people sense that when we left, wow, there's definitely something missing. But, uh, yeah, we, we we made a lot of uh, decisions in a lot of areas that were uh, an important element of the construct of the chemistry of the band, and when when we left it, you know, it was it was a shame that that had to happen the way it did. But uh, you know, we're all still alive and breathing, and and uh, life goes on. And uh, Mike and I are just happily uh, being a font of new music, and uh, and entering the video world was just really. Uh, really wonderful for me. It was like learning a new instrument, so I became fairly adept at video editing, and, and I love shooting video, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's fun to uh, have a craft that you, are just, that you just absolutely love, and you live and breathe every day. Well, you know, we're Facebook friends, and I get to see, you know, your day-to-day. -day. You're always happy. Everything you do, and you, you just you, you just came back from uh, that back into the country. Where, where were you again? Yeah, we were uh, in Norway for two weeks. Oh, Norway, Norway, okay. Yeah. And you travel a lot. I see that, but you're you're, you're just a happy guy. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because because we all have uh, we all have the choice twenty four hours a day. Um, you know what we want to do, how we want to be, what kind of attitude we can have, and what we radiate to the rest of the world. And uh, when you realize that you always have a choice, well, then why not choose a, a way of looking at all the challenges that you face in daily life uh, in a way that that's positive and keeps you on the up. I mean, geez, you, you look at all the things that can, can bring you down, and there, there's a lot of ways to to become miserable. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, I just try and steer away from all that stuff. Good, good for you. 
Let, last time we chatted, uh, you were on the way. You, you were going to do a bike ride, and you're getting ready for that. So I was I was catching you on the way, and, and I think you took a long bike ride or something like that. But you, you guys were, uh, I guess, nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but you didn't you didn't make it the first time. So now oh, okay, I want to yeah. I, I want to wish you a belated congratulations on finally making the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's yeah, that. thanks. Yeah. What an honor to be part of that yeah. crowd of people. It's, uh, it's it's really amazing. You don't know it's how so happy I was to see the original Heart performing together again on stage. That yeah, really that's... made me happy. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of people got a kick out of that for sure. How, how was the re- the reunion received by Anna and Nancy? How did did you guys talk much at the show? Well, we had a rehearsal uh, a couple days before, right. and it was at a rehearsal space in L.A. It was right next to Ozzy's space where he was rehearsing at the time. And uh, when see, all the guys were, were in there first, and we all got all tuned up, and we're just cracking jokes and stuff. And, and uh, so when... When they came in, uh, I went up to each one of them and had a, a, a moment of very personal, intimate conversation before we got going, and right. and that was nice in both uh, in both cases because uh, you could tell very strongly that there was the original uh, love for each other mm-hmm. still there, and that. Uh, that we appreciated. Oh, my cat is biting me. <laughs> we, we we appreciated, you know, seeing each other and having a chance to play again. And uh, so then, when we actually did run the song down, "Crazy on You" for the first time, oh my God, it was so uh, just exactly the same mm-hmm. as it as it used to be. It was it was just. Uh, you know, we hadn't rehearsed yet. This is the first time, and it was just amazing how good it was, how full of electricity it was. It, it reminded me of the very first time that uh, we auditioned Anne. Right. We went to uh, uh, the basement of a house uh, in the Seattle area where where they where she and her band had uh, rehearsed, and when we played the first time. God, it was just absolutely e- electric. It was there was so much energy and excitement in the room that everybody was just shocked. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and uh, that was a precursor of you know to become a great band. But uh, yeah, it, when you have a, a chemistry that uh, works so well like that, it, it's it's really really special. It's like you know you combine. Uh, you combine steel and aluminum and zinc and these certain other uh, elements, and you get mm-hmm. this certain result. You get a you get a thing that is right. only it because of its constituents. And that band was really that way. Uh, without any one of us, it wouldn't have been the same. But because of all of us, it was a a real special blend a real real special chemistry yeah it was really evident on stage you guys were awesome you know and you were having a lot of fun man (laughs) (laughs) you're great man it was it was great to see the old roger again you know on stage with heart it was unbelievable i'm like you you know I, i never really felt the guys in heart got their fair share of credit you know, especially you. You know, and it, and I was a little disturbed when when the girl the the girls just kind of ran off with the band, you know, and did that. I, I know they got lots of talent and everything, but you know, it's not to me. It was never the same band w- without you guys, you know. And I guess the well, only guy that stayed was Howard, right? He was the only one that stuck around there. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> that's the way she goes. <laughs> I know you want to say something else, don't you? <laughs> but well, you're being I, hesitant. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting out here on the grass in front of uh-huh. my house because are you really? <laughs> yeah, there's better there's better phone reception out here, and my dog oh, okay. is, is playing with me and biting me and scratching me. So 
my attention span is being diverted <laughs> a little bit. How many how many critters do you have in uh, living with you there? Oh, we have two cats, uh-huh. and uh, we've got sixteen koi. We put a koi pond in the backyard. Oh wow! Last year, and oh, it's just awesome. There's like four waterfalls. You can go into our backyard, and it's like you've stepped into the mountains. It's uh, it's just gorgeous. Do the cats leave them alone? Yeah, they do. Yeah, fortunately for them, because if they didn't. It'd be <laughs> well. They would be sorry that they didn't do them. <laughs> but no, I, I get in the pond every day with them, and uh, and so now I'm I'm the feeding guy. So uh-huh. when the feeding guy gets in the pond, they just, the fish are just all over me, and it's really, really yeah, it's really a nice feeling. Oh, you got to put that on Facebook. <laughs> I love yeah. to see that. <laughs> yeah, do do a, li- a live a live. A live feed, you know, with you in the uh, in the koi pond feeding the fish. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got to do it. <laughs> oh man! But uh, you know, it's interesting the music business these days. It's yep. uh, it's so different than it used to be. Yep. You know, you'd think that with the level level playing field of the internet, uh, it would have helped independent artists. And it has, in a way, but, uh, man, there there is so much competition now. There's a bajillion uh, musical artists vying for attention, and uh, it's, it's strange because you sell music once, and that's pretty much it. But, for instance, I developed a, a kind of key a few years ago uh, that we that we sell as part of our, as one of our products. And uh, the tea sells, but then in a, in a couple, well, in a month or so, then it sells again, and then it sells again. So the, the tea keeps selling, and it's actually uh, selling better than our music is. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> yeah. But we've got two new albums coming out. We've got part two in the One Vision Project, Right. which is really a cool album about, it, a lot of it is about uh, standing your ground and mm-hmm. uh, making a stand for what you believe in. And so it's real timely along with Standing Rock and things like that. And with so much of the climate of the world right now, it's so polarized yeah. and divided that the force is bringing people together, uh, all those kinds of, uh, movement and clubs and communities and intention is really, really happening, and uh, it's so exciting to see that, and that's kind of what we're a part of. So there's <clears throat> part four of the, I mean, part two of the One Vision Project, which is a four-album project, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. That's coming out real soon, and then uh, we've, uh, we're just about finished with another album called Heart of the Blues. And it's an album that just pays homage to the fact that uh, these people were brought from Africa uh, over on slave ships and sold in the southern United States. And and through their experience and their pain and their challenges, Mm -hmm. uh, the blues was born along with rock and rhythm and blues and jazz and swing and all that came yep. all that came through the Mississippi Delta and so this album Heart of the Blues is uh, touches on a lot of different aspects of that incredibly significant mm-hmm. influence in our world and it's a great album really really uh, so these are going to be cover, cover songs no these they're all Uh-oh. originals Oh, they're yeah. all originals! Wow, that's 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 yeah. incredible. New blues, man. Oh man, that's that's all we do. You know, I've I've got hundreds of songs, mm-hmm. and when it's when it's time for a new album, we look through right the catalog and we'll pick this one and that one to fit with with, with the current songs that we're writing. And so the albums are real, like All Told, which came out last year. It's a mm-hmm. very uh, a very clear. Uh, story of a person's life from being real young and going through all the experiences that we all go through to through death 
And <laughs> the album is so powerful that uh, many people have said that it, it's a life-changing experience for them. They, uh, we recommend that when you listen to that album, that you get a group of people and sit down and, and have a drink and have a smoke or whatever, mm-hmm. and and just sit down ready to spend an hour, a little over an hour, taking this thing in. And when people do that, it's really powerful. It's uh, it's a very, very deep experience. Well, it's an, it's and, an incredible album. Yeah. I, I, I listened to the whole thing, and uh, I wanted to make some comments about it as well. It, you know, you're, There's definitely an influence of world music on the album, which, which yeah. is really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, You've got uh, it's, it's the song I really like. I think was was a favorite. Uh, is Rivers of Soul? Yeah. Oh uh, my gosh, that, that's know. a very powerful song. <laughs> yeah, it really, really is. And the the musicianship. Geez, we uh, we were introduced to this violinist from Singapore uh, through our what incredible lead vocalist Beth Quist. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, this guy is so good, and uh, we took one of his com- uh, compositions and put to- put it together with a composition of mine and a composition of Beth Quist. Right. And yeah, it's just awesome. Uh, the uh, Kylin Kylin Yong is the violinist's name. His contribution to that is so wacky that you you can't say that it's a certain time signature because it's right it's it's this time signature for uh like a bar and then changes and then changes again and then it changes again and all in the space of like three bars and uh you you can't really count it you have to just play it by feel yeah it's interesting stuff very challenging yeah that song blew me away it was there a sitar in there is somebody playing a sitar yeah Yeah, i'd say that we sitar in there because it's kind of kind of an Indian Arabic kind of twist to it, you know. Sometimes Indian music sounds a little bit like Arabic music, so it's kind of hard sometimes to determine the difference in the two, you know. Yeah, yeah. The point but, being that it, it uh, the world is is getting smaller all the time in terms of our ability to communicate and right. be influenced by and uh, use the different flavors. Uh, ethnicities and cultural backgrounds in the expression of art, and so having that palette uh, at our avail was just so much fun. You know, bringing different flavors in and uh, kind of bringing the world together in a musical sense that way. Yeah, just a total exactly. joy. Also, pray for love. You know, and who's singing on "Pray for Love"? Who does the wailing on that song? Uh. Well, I, I sing the lead on it. Okay. Is, is that what you're like, talking about? Well, isn't there a, a, a girl also on that, yeah. on that track? Okay. Yeah, that, that's Beth Quist. Okay. Yeah. Incredible. Four range, four octave uh, range voice. Uh, amazing talent. W- would you call this album kind of a concept album? Oh, absolutely, you... yeah. Yeah, okay. It, yeah. And in a way, all of the albums are because they, they are all uh, intended to bring specific points home. Right. Well, it's a it's a great album. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, are you still there, Roger? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I I thought I lost you there for a minute. <laughs> a lot of people have thought that over the years. <laughs> Uh, you started out with taking the torch sound a little bit like Barracuda, you know. Yeah, it's got that gallop thing going yeah, on. Yeah, a little bit of that riff. Uh, you had a very nice slide guitar on One Vision and a drum solo. on. It was a lo- That was a long track. That was a long, long tune. I, I really yeah, enjoyed that one as well. Yeah, in there. Yeah, that was pretty cool having Michael Shreve from Santana and Michael DeRozier from Hart going back and forth trading eight. Oh really? I didn't know that, huh? Yeah, yeah. I I, I didn't know you had uh, Michael Shreve from Santana on that track, huh? Yeah, yeah. What a joy wow. to work with. Another great musician. 
Yeah, that's that's awesome. They just did a reunion together, as a matter of fact. Which yeah. Is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Swept Away was a short, very short thing, but it was a spacey intro, and I, I was waiting for more of the song, because it sounded great. <laughs> I wanted it yeah. to go on and on and on, man. <laughs> yeah. You have to come to the live show to, to get that. Yeah. Dear Friend, uh, to me, it, was a, a, it reminded me a little bit of Zeppelin, like an acoustic Zeppelin, you know, song, yeah. in a way. Well, you know, geez, Jimmy Page was such a big influence on me. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, my brother and I just adore uh, Zeppelin and, and what Jimmy brought to the table. It's uh, it's easy to uh, be really inspired and do great things when you're so inspired by other people who are so great, you know. Have you ever met Jimmy? No. Never no, did. huh? Oh man. No. I know uh Ann and Nancy were you know, with with the Kennedy Center honors, you know, when when they honored Zeppelin. Now, that must have been a big thrill for them. Ah, no kidding. What a what an amazing <laughs> oh, performance geez. that was. Jeez. Yeah. I mean they made Led Le Zeppelin cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, yeah, Petra. Yeah. Now, here's my interpretation of Petra. You know who? You know what it sounds like. To me, it sounds like a combination of ELO and the Beatles. Yeah, a lot of people have remarked the, uh, have the they Beatles said that? sound. Pardon me? Have Have other people said that? Yeah, the, especially the Beatles part. Right. Well, you know, ELO kind of sounds like the Beatles at times too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because there was no intention or no deliberate. Uh, right. There was no attempt to sound like the Beatles or anything. Well, it's a good but, thing. I, I just I just talked to Todd Rundgren, and on his latest album, one of his tracks sounded exactly like a Brian Wilson, uh, and and he agreed. He said, I, "I didn't intend to it, but it does sound like Brian Wilson's work." <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it yeah, happens. I saw Brian Wilson in Seattle a couple of months ago. My uh-huh. God, it was so so good. Really good show, huh? Better than the Beach Boys, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, he, he was. Busy. Yeah, he was Pardon? Mr. Beach Boy. He was. He was Mr. Beach Boy. You know. Yeah, he, he was, sure was. Yeah. 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 Thank God for people who have really dedicated themselves to their craft and reached into their 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 personal life so deeply and mm-hmm. brought something out that is so so valuable like uh God only knows my god what a great song oh my god you know they they're an american treasure the beach boys yeah you know just hit after hit and they you know they they i guess pretty much started be before the beatles did you know they were out there in 61 62 Already making yeah. making songs, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, wanted to talk about a couple of things. The feud between Ann and Nancy. I guess you know what's going on there, right? Oh, you know, we all hear what we hear. Uh, yeah. I've heard some things. Do, do, do you know uh, Ann's husband, Dean Wetter? No, I don't know him. You don't know him? Yeah. Well, uh, it's it's a shame, but you know it's, it's just a typical family thing that's happened. I, what have you heard? Have you heard the same thing that's been going going around on the news and everything? Oh, I don't really want to talk about that. Okay, that's fine. But I know that uh, <clears throat> they're both doing like their own solo thing now. And I, I did see Nancy on YouTube doing a. Uh, uh, she, let's see, she was on. Um, it wasn't the Hard Rock. It was the other one, um, I, the House of Blues. She did a show with the House of Blues with a lot of new stuff, as a matter of fact, which, which was yeah, pretty good. Yeah, the uh, stuff that I've seen from her new band uh, shows real promise. Yeah, I was pretty surprised to see all, all that new material, you know, come out. But uh, it was it was good. It was a very very good show. Well, your your album, uh, I'm going to give it. I'll give it five stars because I think it's, you know, there was a lot of work put into that album. <laughs> God, no kidding. <laughs> the, the, the thing about it is that it's part one of a four-album complex, and 
the four albums all dovetail and uh, are synergistic with each other. So to be able to pull that off, we had to think of all this stuff for the mm-hmm. first album that, that is going to be uh, repeating and uh, having different relevance when the other albums come out. Right. By the time all four albums are out, if anybody can stomach all four albums, <laughs> they'll see all this uh, all this ingenious dovetailing of concepts and ideas, both musically and lyrically, that will be mind-blowing. And it'll be this great masterpiece, <laughs> at least in our minds, that's what we're creating. But uh, as rock goes out of style... Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I wonder what we're doing all the work for, you know. But yeah. <laughs> you, we just, it's, you, you can't not do what you do. I mean, this is what we do. And uh, so somebody's got to like it, you know. Well, you know, like you yeah. said, it, it's it's not really a rock album. You know, I don't know what the next one's going to sound like. But, you know, th- this fits in the category, too, of world music. You know, I mean, <clears> people <throat> from all over the world can really enjoy these tracks. You know, yeah. so it's, it's yeah, not the, out of style the, or anything. You know, second album has a lot more straightforward rock on it. it it's actually got a couple of songs that sound like grunge because they were written at that time when grunge was happening, and they really? sound very, huh. very much like grunge. Really, it's kind huh. of cool coming out with grunge in 2017. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Well, you are from Seattle, yeah. from the Washington area, so that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, you're kind of, around that whole scene. Kind of naturally bubbles in the veins up here, I think. Exactly. It's so sad though the grunge period and all the artists that are are leaving us. I can't. I just can't fathom that. You know, I, I was a big fan of Chris Cornell, and yeah. uh, that just blew me away. And yeah, now we have really... another one yesterday with Lincoln Park. You know, I mean. Yeah. What, what do you make of all this? Is it just you know these guys just get depressed? Is you know what, what do you think? I mean. Well, I know exactly uh, what a person feels that gets really depressed. Right. What I found in myself was that uh, I was so indulgent in certain areas that you, you can only indulge so much and you get fatigued. And when you keep uh, indulging when you're fatigued, you become weak, deep, deep inside yourself, Mm -hmm. and everything, the world loses its color, everything looks different, your attitude and perception of everything changes, and you get depressed, and it's just such an awful whirlpool to get caught in, because you become so helpless, you can't can't see a way out of it, and... uh, when there's no way out, you know, you become suicidal. And mm-hmm. <clears throat> so part of maturing and becoming wise as you get older is recognizing in yourself those directions that you can get off in that right. lead to that whirlpool. And right. so you become wise enough to just not go there. Yep. You know, you choose happy roads and... Mm-hmm. When you are happy and, and you you are full of love for, for life and the people around you and you recognize that you are a beacon of light that people need to see, then your life is no longer about me, 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 I, me, mine. I want to feel good. I want to have comfort. I want to have pleasure. It's more about, you know, what am I giving? What am I giving to everybody else? And when your life becomes more focused on what you're giving than what you're getting, then you experience great joy. And it's the opposite of depression. It's the opposite of suicidal. You know, you're you're celebrating the joy that you find through your friends and family. And that cohesiveness, that union that you have built with just caring about each other is your is your star that you bring to the world. And Mm -hmm. if you don't have that star, you're not a star. You're you're an indulgent, uh, probably pompous person that is is going to self-destruct. And it's very sad. 
Yeah. Well said. Well said. You know, you know, the Christian, you know, believe, you know, with with Jesus, if you act like Jesus, that's that's the way to be. You know what I mean? On earth. And you know, it's yeah. exactly what yeah. you said, you know, you know, give give, you know, yourself to people and help people and, you know, be humble, that kind of thing. But like you say, if it's me, me, me all the time, you'll never accomplish anything. That way. Yeah, it gets real boring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and I don't think it's a matter of money. You know, sometimes, I mean, these guys have enough money. It's not, you know, people always say, well, why would he kill himself if he's, you know, a multimillionaire? And he's got six kids on top of that, you know. it's That's the sad part is the children. The children yeah, it's just incredible. Suffer. And, you know, it's easy for me to talk about <clears throat> about stuff. But right. The, the things that are going on in people's lives can be so complex that, you know, from the outside, we don't know exactly. how challenging the hurdles were in that person's life. And exactly, yeah, you know, it's, it's not a whole lot you can say. You know, we all go through a uh, we all go through a lot, and yep. uh, to the degree that we can learn and adapt, that's how uh, that's how well we'll survive. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. I, I chatted with uh, Ronnie Montrose. Uh, Keith Emerson, I mean, you know, great, great guys. I, I was helping Ronnie during his last, his final tour over here in Florida, and we hung out together a little bit and everything. And then Keith Emerson, I talked to him for like a year, uh, an hour and a half. He sounded like a, you know, he was happy and you know, lots of jokes and this and you just never know, you know, you just never know. Yeah. Shame. Yeah. You, yep. Your uh, your herbal tribe tea. Uh, where, where can people buy it? Can you buy it online or? Uh, right now, I think we're only selling it at uh, RogerFisher dot com. Okay. But we're just uh, just about to ramp up and come out with uh, new packaging, and it will be available in tea bags. Okay. And it's just amazing stuff. I was without it for a couple of months here. Uh, waiting for the new batch to be created. And the new batch is different than the old batch in that it's been cut and sifted into smaller pieces. And so the whole, uh, you know, 200 pounds of tea is all blended more perfectly. Um, Mm -hmm. It's just, it's like 30, I think there's 34 elements in it now, which is the most complex tea in the world, wow. and the all the constituents are have a certain specific uh, thing that they do in in the body, mm-hmm. and the synergism of them working together is amazing. Like my favorite thing about the tea is what it does to your mind. It mm-hmm. really it, it increases blood flow to the brain, uh, simulates your uh, pineal gland, which is uh, really important. I mean, anybody who knows about the pineal gland knows that it's it's like the third eye. It's your your interface to the higher energy, higher uh, intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so when when that gets more sharp, then you you tend to be a little bit more telepathic and that sort of thing. And, you know, it's, it's, it's cool because when I was younger, you couldn't really talk about telepathy very much because people would just think you're nuts. But right. as, as more and more people realize that, wow, I actually do have a little bit of telepathy now and then, and I can nurture that and cultivate that and increase it, well, then something like this human tribe tea becomes very... Uh, uh, very well. It becomes very important because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's wonderful stuff. Yeah. Well, how how did it all come together? I mean, the the ingredients and everything. Who who's making the tea? Did well, you... it originally started with my desire to. Uh, I, I was just googling different herbs and stuff, and I thought, well, geez, I would like a tea that would do this and would help this right. and would do this and would help this. Right. 
Right. And so I just put together uh, about 25 ingredients and made this tea. And I was showing it off, this big jar of it on Facebook, when a longtime friend of mine uh, contacted me. This guy uh, has studied under the Dalai Lama. He's a mm-hmm. actual Tibetan doctor. He's an herbalist and a perfumist. Right. And uh, he said, well, geez, Raj, you know, you should add this, this, and this, and you should do it in these proportions, and you would have something that's doing what you want it to do, but even more powerfully. So he and I uh, worked together on the formula, and uh, it's cool stuff. It, uh, you drink this tea and you immediately are thinking more clearly. Uh, it, it increases your circulation, so it's like the ideal thing for a hangover, for instance. My yeah. God, <laughs> get, get up in the morning, you've got, you've got a hangover, you drink this tea, huh. and it just it just cleans you out. <clears throat> it, uh, it helps all that latent uh, alcohol right. move through your veins and... and it does the opposite of what alcohol does. So uh, very often at parties, I'll, I'll bring a big thermos of the tea, the kind where you can you know push on a, a button on the top and it dispenses itself into your cups, nice okay. and hot. And we have a favorite at parties. It's called we call it tequila. Mm-hmm. Like you, you take that human tried tea and put a shot of tequila in it, and oh, really? It, oh, oh man. it's so good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, while you're curing the hangover and, and drinking at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you're creating the hangover and curing it at the same time. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm assuming, there's, is there any caffeine in this at all? Or? There's no caffeine. No it's, caffeine. It's, uh, it's slightly stimulating, but it's also right. relaxing at the same time. So It's all natural. Yeah, all yeah natural I stuff. think it's, it's balancing is what it does. Yeah, I'm going to get some. I'm going to try because me, me and my wife also drink. It, it, I, I saw it had ginkgo biloba, right? Was, that was exactly. in there as well. Yeah, yeah, that 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 increases blood flow in the in the brain, providing yep. you have one. Well, that's that's that, you know. I wish you all the luck with it, man. I hope it takes off big time. I'm sure it will. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the teas it's, like wine. You know, there's the, the, people like a variety of different teas. You know. Yeah. And it, they get excited about it. Yeah, and dealing with uh, with this one particular person in the tea industry that I'm working with on the packaging, etc. Man, this guy! You come into his uh, his place of business, and it always smells really good in there because it's full of all these different herbs. And he'll sit you down and try on three or four different kinds of tea that are each so good and so. Uh, it's, it's like they're the best you can get in the world of, of the, each of these different kinds of teas. Mm-hmm. And, man, it just really gives you an appreciation for uh, the depth of art that can be uh, involved in in tea and uh, the effects of, of different herbs. It's, it's really great. It's been a real fun exploration into this industry. Exactly. I mean, it, it's amazing how rock stars have become entrepreneurs. Like uh, Jesse Colin Young, you know, he, he, he's got coffee. He's got a coffee farm in Hawaii. Oh. And, yep. And uh, um, Roger Earl from Fog Hat. They've got Fog Hat wine. They have their own oh, yeah. wine. Yeah. So, and, and now here's Roger's human tribe tea. Yeah. Awesome. That's <laughs> excellent, man. Yeah, I'm gonna try some. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll order some from your uh, your website for me and my wife That's to try. Good. Yeah, it might be a, break, a regular thing. Is, is there uh, an amount you should not drink, or you can drink it all day? Because <laughs> I'm a I'm a big coffee drinker too. <laughs> yeah, well, this it's great because you can. I mean, once you have had your like morning fix of coffee, then if right. you switch to, to this tea, you find that it's uh, mentally clarifying and it gives you. Uh, a certain kind of energy that is real helpful to to being productive and creative. I I drank it every day uh, in pretty large quantities for two years Mm -hmm. uh, before really pushing it that much as a product because I just wanted to make sure, uh, you know, that I didn't start 
growing tendrils out of my earlobes or some <laughs> weird thing. <laughs> and uh, aside from my uh, usual extraordinarily uh, unacceptable quirkiness, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think the tea is, is safe and good. <laughs> good. Yeah, it's all yeah. natural stuff. I did see the ingredients, and there's quite a lot of ingredients in it, but it's all natural things. That you, yeah, you know, all organic herbs. All organic, yeah. From all over the world, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Roger, here's a question I ask everybody. Um, if you had a Feel the Dreams wish, you know, like the movie, to perform or collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who, who would you pick? Oh, I've put that band together many times. Well, it would. Uh, we'd have uh, David Gilmore and uh, Jeff Beck. Uh, Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, Paul McCartney, uh, Ringo, and uh, Mike DeRocher. Mm -hmm. uh, there's certain other people that you probably haven't heard of, but like this guy named Gordy Ryan is one of the world's best hand percussionists. My God, he's mm -hmm. just awesome. He's in my present band. Uh, yeah, but I've always wanted to play with McCartney, and I know that if we wrote together, it would be awesome. It would just be amazing. So that's that's uh, that's been a goal for a long time. Only, the only way that something like that can come true, I think, is if we had the kind of success that I would like to have with our mm -hmm. current project, which right. isn't out of the question, but it's pretty far and remote, it seems like. The possibility of, you know, having major success again at 67 years old, it seems pretty unlikely, but, you know, I don't I don't really care. People, uh, every once in a while, will make a comment like, geez, Raj, you know, you're, uh, you're 67 years old now, you've had all this success. Are, does it bum you out that you aren't uh, being successful now? And I say, you know, I get together and work with my brother five days a week sure. on music, and I can't imagine any greater success than that. Right, and so, right. So exactly. I, am, I am successful, you know. It yeah. doesn't matter if the music sells or not. I know the music is great, and uh, and I love it, and I get to work with this amazing great person every day and so I'm so grateful my life is so blessed <laughs> Roger is still a young guy man I, I you know I covered uh, John Mayall's show here he, he turned when he turned 80 in Sarasota and uh -huh. you know the guy's still putting out albums you know he's got to be like 83 now 84 uh, Petula Clark I interviewed her she's still pumping him out she's in her 80s you're still uh, a young guy. <laughs> yeah, that's We're right. expecting a lot more out of you now. <laughs> yeah. That's good to hear. We just opened so. up a, a new can of worms for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's a good idea. You should get some more um, collaborations and you know, invite some of these guys, especially maybe on the Blues album. Uh, is the Blues album already recorded? Yeah, and we did do, really? well, we did do one collaboration that is absolutely extraordinary and that was with this lady named Mindy Abair. Okay. You know that name? I heard of the name, yeah. I think I might have saw her on maybe YouTube. Yeah, she she toured with Aerosmith. Uh, right. She's just a rising star. She is so good. She's such a great saxophonist. She's just, she's just coming out with a new album that would be totally worth uh, looking into, but she plays on two tracks on the blues oh, album, and it, it she just blows, blows you away. She's so good. Yeah, I love saxophone. It's one of my yeah, favorite I, instruments. I really like playing with musicians that play off the lyrics of a song. That's what I did with, with Heart, and that's what right. I think really gave the guitar playing relevance. And, and it gave it energy and gave it meaning was because I was interpreting the lyrics of the song and putting out the kind of energy that supported the lyrics. So uh, that's, I think, a large part of what made my guitar playing 
work. And so when you got a bass player, oh, we had this monstrous bass player on the blues album, a Russian guy named Farko Dasumov. Huh. He's just he's just he's one of the one of the three best bass players in the Seattle area. <clears throat> and uh he plays out the lyrics. And so you're you you're hearing this uh song it's like the first song of, on the album is called No More Blues and right. It's just the story of sitting out on a front porch with an old black guy just just chilling and and laying down some slide guitar. And the bass player in this song, Parko, is just just accenting the lyrics so nicely. He's he's speaking the lyrics with a non verbal voice. Mm-hmm. It's just it's, it's extraordinary. And then Mindy Abair comes in with her sax and just explodes with this joyous part when we were recording it uh, at the village in L.A. I told her, Mindy, when you come in with the, the sax solo, I want you to just be exploding with joy, playing mm-hmm. like you've never played before. And right. God, she, she really, <laughs> really steps up and does that. God, she just carries you away. When you hear... When you hear the song No More Blues, you're going to, mm-hmm. I think you'll think that, my God, that's a hit song. I, I listened to it last night, and that's what I thought. I thought, man, this is a hit song. <clears throat> and, I, I uh, can't wait for the album. I really yeah. can't. Yeah. yeah. You don't get a chance to listen to too much, too many blues. You know, I, I, I used to like Johnny Winters, uh, you know, when he did the, uh, he brought in some other artists, like his last one, Roots, you know, his Roots albums and things like that oh, yeah. but there's not a lot of there's not a lot of you know blues out there i, I love uh beth hart when, when anything she does i've had her on the show she's got a great blues voice but uh bonamassa yeah the bonamassa yeah bonamassa yeah he's good i really like him this, yep. this album this album i'm talking about is not a blues album it's uh, right it's uh and it's homage to the blues and to mm-hmm. the roots of, of all that. But it, it's not blues, per se. I didn't want it. We don't need another blues album from some white yeah. guy, I don't think. So, but it, it's a real celebration of blues. And it gets bluesy in places, but there's mm-hmm. gospel influence and jazz influence. And I just spoke yesterday with a, a person that I'm going to be co-writing the last song with. And uh, he's a major force in the in the industry, kind of mm-hmm. a behind the scenes composer right. guy. Uh, and we're going to bring an orchestral aspect to the very last song. So oh, wow. the album will I... yeah, the, the album will uh, evolve from very simple down home bluesy influence at the beginning to a fully evolved. Uh, multi-piece orchestra uh, ending that will be uh, very a very significant uh, contribution to you know today's rock music right that's incredible that's going to be a great album okay now when do you expect it to be released uh by september i think by september okay yeah Looking forward to that for sure. You know, you got your own uh, signature style. You know, I mean, I, sometimes only the uh, rock and roll, you know, aficionados can pick things up. You know, sometimes you know, people are just so used to hearing the same thing over and over again. But you definitely have your own style of playing guitar. You know, and that's that's yeah. what made Heart. That, that's what made Heart so great. You know, I mean, the, the girls were awesome, but you guys were even more awesome in my my opinion. You know, all the guys in the beginning of Heart wanted to, you know, that they, they were there to hear the rock and roll that you guys produced. You guys were awesome. Yeah. You know? Thank you. Yeah. You guys are yeah, awesome, that, and you, you got the sound. You have that, you know, particular Roger Fisher sound that nobody else can yeah. produce. Thank God for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got that going for me. Well, we exactly. Do stuff because that influence is, you know. Uh, even more clear now because I'm I'm singing in a very uh, signature style as well, and 
Yeah, you know, I didn't know you had such a good voice, by the way. You know, well, I never got a chance you. to really, really hear your voice before. Yeah, you know, back yeah. in the day with Hart, uh, I smoked cigarettes, and okay. that was a real, it, it got, just made my voice not work. I, I couldn't sing in tune, right? and so Band and Nance wouldn't let me sing, you know, live. Mm-hmm. It was so often out of tune. So that was really, really uh, painful for me not to be included in the singing. So right, when I left right. the band, I devoted myself. I was taking lessons two hours a day, five days a week with Seattle's uh, <laughs> most notorious vocal coach. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so it worked really, really hard to become a singer. And uh, yeah, and it's, it, it's fun, you know, uh, as an artist, when you are being influenced by the greatness that has come before you, uh, you can't copy, you can't show an influence that's too strong or you're ripping off your right. your, your influence. So right. part of the artistic process, part of the process of becoming an artist is finding you, finding your character and... Mm-hmm and bringing that out. And so that was a very deliberate uh, choice I made early on when I realized that I could play, I could sound like Howard Roberts, I could sound like Jimmy Page, I could sound like Hendrix, I could sound like Van Halen. Then I deliberately didn't <clears throat> copy those guys too much because I didn't want too much of their influence in my playing. Right. And I would just, yeah, so it, it, it very deliberately chose a path that didn't, follow too closely in other people's footsteps. And that's hard Although, to do. <laughs> There's so many really guitars. hard to do. Very yeah. really hard to do. You well, know? That's, why somebody like, that's why somebody like like Hendrix or Van Halen or uh, or Jeff Beck are so extraordinary because their signatures are so clearly yep. them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, you also have your own signature voice now too because you know it's 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 you you know and well, I, wait, can tell, I can tell there, yeah I, I there's this character that that comes out that right uh, it's like i've got a, a, an old uh just an old weathered black blues guy uh-huh. tethered up in, inside me and <laughs> he comes out like a catfish comes out from under a, a log he comes out and he's just kind of He's just kind of like this, you know. Right, right. <laughs> Are you drinking uh, Jack Daniels out of a brown paper bag while you're singing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, hang, hang, on. Up. hang on for a second, Ray. My, my brother's calling. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Rod. You are on the air live uh, on Tampa Bay <laughs> Radio. Hey, Mike. <laughs> well, hey, who's this? This is Ray Shasho. You're on the Ray Shasho Show. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're, we're, we broadcast from California, but I'm in Tampa, in the Tampa Bay area. So uh, we, we broadcast all over the world. And I've, I've been talking to Roger, and he's telling me how happy he is working with you and seeing his his brother every day. So. Oh, that's you, so cool. Yeah, yeah you guys got well, a great yeah. relationship. Yeah, it's really, really amazing. And I can't even imagine how lucky anybody would be that got to do what I get to do every day with Raj. It's just so incredible. And, and you're you're creating great music, you know. I gave uh, All Told five stars. It was it was an it's an excellent album, you know, a lot of work went into it. We're looking forward to the blues album. We're also looking forward to uh some more of the the Balance of the Untold series as well. Yeah, the second album work is almost teed up. Right. And we're so excited about it. There's some really great commercial type uh, music on there. But you guys you guys have the background, you know, you're you're profi- I was telling uh uh Roger, you know, for me Hart was never the same when the guys left, you know, and the, the guys never really got their their fair share of credit. Because, because of the girls, you know, because they, you know they did sing well and they were great songwriters and everything. But the rock and roll of Heart was definitely the guys, and and I was just talking about Roger's signature playing. It, you know, it, nobody can uh, 
nobody can copy Roger. He's got his own style, you know, and that's <laughs> definitely the hard style. So uh, yeah, it's it's really apparent when uh, he sits in with some of these hard tribute bands. Right. It's so fun to watch because they'll, they'll some of these bands are really good. But they when are Roger good. Steps on stage with them. Yeah. It just goes through the roof. It's just such an amazing change all of a sudden when that happens. Yeah, I wanted to ask uh, who, who, who uh, I guess uh, Ann and Nancy ended up with the uh, the trademark, right? The, the heart name? How, how did that ever happen anyway? I know you got to vote on it, and it, there's a, like a corporation. It's just like a corporation when you vote on that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, when we, set, when, we, when we created heart, uh, right. we created it with Ann. So, right. Uh, that that business that company was a partnership between us band members and somewhere along the way in a in a in a rush at an airport uh, somebody showed up with about three inch thick contract that was changing everything about our business mm-hmm. <laughs> which we were compelled to sign like quickly and you know without really studying right. all the fine print and. A lot of things got changed around to the detriment of uh, um, everybody except Andy yeah. Nancy, I think. Ah, because you would have had probably enough people to vote against it, really, right? Because, like, in the corporation, people have to sign off on it. And uh, I think the only the only one that stayed there was, was Howard. So you, you might have had the votes. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, that that when you eliminate people, right? There's more money for each of the people that stay. <laughs> so okay. that's a. But but it, it wasn't really that simple, you know. There were right. some a lot of other forces going on, and the way it was going, Roger and I, you know, we we pretty much needed to leave in a right. way because right. it it was going to go in a direction that wasn't right for us. And that's what happened. Yeah, it did. You, you you didn't want to fight it. You just wanted out. Well, we were, much. we fought yeah. it for a long time. I mean, if, if you know any group of people that are trying to work together, there's there's certain tensions here and there. Yeah. The beauty of of heart was that the result of that was this beautiful thing. And and mm-hmm. you should, we Roger and I were of the opinion that you should respect that. Sure. And and, and honor that and honor the, and respect each other enough to be able to give and take a little bit and mm-hmm. because it was the, the synchronicity and the, and the joy we all had working together that, and, and working through things where, you know, there was competitive ideas and, and personalities, but the, the end result was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You did a wonderful job, by the way, with the band. You really did. You, you were very instrumental to, I guess, directing the band, you know, in the right direction and everything. The, the well, early days, uh, early days of heart were yeah, I, unbelievable. I have, I have a lot more respect for anybody that is in the role that I was in because it's right. really, really hard to get people to harmonize uh, in the right way you know, over a period of time, and and it's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not. It, it really isn't. Well, it's like owning your own business, you know, pretty much, and you know, just running things day to day. Yeah, it's a lot like that, except it's it's harder because you're you're on the road twenty four seven with yeah. each other. Um, you don't you know you don't get to go home and have vacations and stuff. At least when you're on the kind of schedule that we were on, doing two hundred and fifty shows a year or something like that. <clears throat> you know, I saw Hart at a small club in Baltimore called the Hollywood Palace. Can you, this is before you guys even made it to, you know, arenas or anything like that. It was a very I remember small that. club. <laughs> I remember that night. That That's a long time ago, man. <laughs> so, so, Ray, that was kind of like a, a, a downstairs. It had a low ceiling, right? It had a low ceiling, right? Yep. Yeah. I, we just kicked ass in that place. Yeah, the acoustics were pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ba- Baltimore loved you guys. Baltimore, D.C. area. That's where I grew up in, in the Baltimore, D.C. area. Very cool. Ro- Roger, you have anything else to add? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> on the subject of being happy, 
I would uh, suggest to our listeners that you choose happiness instead of getting too riled up about all the stuff we can get riled up about, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's what I have to say. Choose happiness. Well, uh, everybody needs to take your advice because all they have to do is check you out on Facebook and see you smiling every day and having fun. (laughs) (laughs) Raj is pure fun almost all the time. Oh, yeah, I can see that. (laughs) I can see how you you guys growing up as as brothers must have been a lot of fun. Oh, it was. It was. Yeah. It, there was a very significant evolutionary pro- process that took place there. <laughs> I like that there explanation. Was no what, what's was, the difference no between you, your ages? Ray, just a sec. So at one point, uh, uh, we were we were getting close. I mean, you know, brothers fight. We were getting right. close to the point where somebody was going to get killed. So we made a pass. <laughs> we passed that, that point. <laughs> yeah. We made a pact that we're not going to fight anymore and that we're going to be cool to each other. Right. Yeah, and ever since then, it's been it's been wonderful. Awesome. Well, when did you make yeah. that pact? How long ago? <laughs> what about we about 59 uh, yeah, 13 and 15 years old, I think. But, you know, at I think I was 8 or 9, 9 or 10, I guess, when I was in a fight with my brother and sister. Uh-huh. And Roger went into our dad's bedroom, got his German Luger, which was oh, loaded, man. and came out and pointed it right at my head and pulled the Holy trigger crap. out. That's a learning experience that's wow. very intense. <laughs> that and is intense. People can say they've experienced that, but I have experienced that, and that teaches you a whole lot about getting along with each other. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> that's pretty scary. <laughs> Roger, Mike, I want to get you guys on again after the Blues album is is released, so we can promote the hell out of that. Because I'm really looking forward to that, and uh, and and the rest of the albums with All Told, you got lots of stuff going on, and uh, you know the best of luck to both of you, and and keep on rocking, man. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much, Ray. Uh, yeah, stay in touch, and uh, good things are coming. Awesome. Th- thank you so much for being on the show, both of you. Great talking to you, Ray. Great talking to you, too. Take care. Okay, we'll Bye-bye. see you. Have fun. All right. Bye-bye now. Purchase All Told, the latest album by Roger Fisher and the Human Tribe at Amazon.com. For more information about Roger Fisher and upcoming tour dates, visit www.rogerfisher.com or visit Roger's Facebook page and see how happy he is every day at www.facebook.com backslash Raj 4 real backslash. And Roger's also on Twitter at Roger Fisher at R-R-R-O-G. Very special thanks to Doug and Don Newsom with BBS Radio for making it all happen every show. Please join me bi-weekly Mondays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on the Ray Shasho Show. If you have comments or suggestions or would like to be a guest on the Ray Shasho Show, call 941-877-1552 or email us at ray at publicityworksagency.com. And please don't forget to purchase a copy of my book entitled Check the G's, The True Story of an Eclectic American Family and Their Wacky Family Business, or the second edition entitled Wacky Shenanigans on F Street, Proud to be Politically Incorrect in Washington, D.C., available now at Amazon. Dot com. You'll live it. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ray Shasho Show, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call 941-877-1552 or visit us at publicityworksagency.com, specializing in author and music artist publicity plans. We shine when we make you shine. Join Ray Shasho every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on BBS Radio, Station 1.